William Swallow was not William Swallow. He was born William Walker in the port town of Sunderland, Durham County, England, 1792. Growing up by the docks, it's no surprise that a young William took up a sailing apprenticeship working the collier vessels operating in and out of that harbour town. William would have been to nearly every major port in England, including London, and would have amassed a lot of sailing experience, which came to define his working life. But it wasn't going to be smooth sailing on merchant ships around England for William. In his early 20s, William Walker was press ganged into the Royal Navy to fight against France. For two years, he served and acquitted himself well, with no records of him being subject to harsh disciplinary action from the Navy, despite being bullied into the job in the first place. When the war against Napoleon had finished, William was able to leave the Navy and gain civilian employment on sea again as a ship's master. He was to marry, having three children, and settling down to a bright future as a mariner and a family man. Until... The company ship William was sailing on unfortunately came to bad circumstances and floundered. Now, William luckily survived, but the company he worked for, well, they were unable to recoup from the loss of their ship and William found himself unemployed. Getting work on the docks after the war was hard for a sailor. Many sailors had returned to civilian work and all the merchant shipping companies were at full capacity. William, unfortunately, well, he had to feed his family and properly care for them. This event changed the trajectory of William's life. And when you're desperate, sometimes you do things that you normally wouldn't do. 10 pence. 10 pence worth of stuff William stole. And in England in the early 1800s, that was pretty serious. But luckily for William, it didn't warrant the death penalty. But unlucky for William, he was sentenced to seven years transportation to that new place everyone was talking about, Van Diemen's Land, on the far side of the world. Seven years transportation. Are you serious? Today you just get a slap on the wrist, a good behaviour bond maybe, but that's about it. To send someone to the other side of the world, I don't know, it seems a bit harsh to me. Anyway, through this experience, William discovered he had another talent. Some of us can sing, some can cook, some can sail boats. For William, he had this uncanny ability to escape. And that is exactly what he did. Me mateys, I just don't want to go to Van Diemen's land. Just let me stay home with my family. While en route to London, an opportunity presented itself that, well, William just couldn't say no to. Another convict had jumped overboard, and while all the crew were distracted looking for him, William stuffed his clothes full of cork that he found on the ship and jumped overboard himself. Nobody noticed. William stayed afloat for five hours in a rough North Sea and was discovered by another passing ship and rescued. William just said, I was thrown overboard in rough weather while on the top mast. Could have happened to anybody. But, you know, I am a sailor. And that was so convenient for William. The ship needed an extra hand anyway. Eventually, William found himself on the London docks. And, amazingly, there was plenty of work. But, William Walker, yeah, he's a wanted man. I think it's time for a name change. It's Brown, mate. William Brown. I've always been known as William Brown around these parts. Whatever you say, Mr. Brown, we'll just have to take your word for it. After a couple of months, William got a bit homesick and decided enough was enough, he had to get back home to Sunderland. So he boarded the next ship out. And there he was, back in Sunderland, this time with a big bushy beard. No one's going to recognise me with a big beard. William was recognised immediately. Although his wife and kids would have been happy to see him, they wouldn't have been so happy to see him taken away so quickly. He was boarded on a ship, a good ship that he couldn't escape from, he landed back in London a 
waiting to start his seven year exile sentence in Van Diemen's Land. Hobart, Van Diemen's Land, also known by the First Nations people of the area as Nipaluna, was set up first and foremost as a convict penal colony, and this was a place where William Walker had to get used to. But believe it or not, being a convict in Hobart in the 1820s wasn't all that bad. Convicts were allowed to find lodgings in Hobart they weren't put into jail immediately at all. And as long as they reported to work every day and went to church on a Sunday, they were pretty much left to their own devices. William, because he was a mariner and had lots of sailing experience, well, he was given a job in the shipyards, which is not a surprise. Hey, there it is over there. Take that scooter over there. That's mine. Yeah. I'll get you, sir. I'll get you out of here. We'll do that. Get you out of here. We'll do that. We'll okay, let's do it. Let's go. Let's go. William seizes the opportunity to steal a private schooner with a few other convicts with the intention of getting to Sydney then back to England. You have to hand it to William. He's a cunning fellow. He plans and he strikes while the iron's hot. A very good tactical man, but maybe not the best strategic thinker. He gets them all the way to Sydney. You know, Sydney probably not the best choice to go to, but then again, where else are you going to go? He's going to try to get home any way he can. You can't go around calling yourself William Walker. You'll have to think of another name. Ah, William, you little scallywag. Good plan. All you have to do is change your name and no one will notice or ask questions about who you are or where you're from. Just say that you're a whaler who got lost. The schooner was reported stolen in Hobart and they sent a letter to Sydney. Sydney gets the letter. All they had to do was go down to the harbour, find the schooner and then track down the person who sailed it. Sorry William, the game's already over before it begins. And it didn't take long to track down the man who sailed that schooner into Sydney Harbour. He's no whaler. He's an escaped convict from Hobart Town. Convict number 323, a.k.a. Mr. William Walker, is forthwith boarded onto a ship and immediately sent back down to Hobart. It's not really a routine trip from Sydney to Hobart without a routine storm in Bass Strait. When the weather was at its fiercest, William found himself being unshackled by the ship's crew, knowing that he was a sailor, so he could help out and get the ship through the storm. The decision by the captain to allow William, a convict, to assist with helping the ship through the storm, proved to make the difference between life or death. William proved himself not just to be a competent sailor, but brave and courageous in the face of danger and willing to put his own life on the line to save everybody on that vessel. One of the ship's masts had broken during the storm and was hanging by a thread. William, without hesitation, using his skills as a sailor again, climbed to the top of the mast with an axe and cut the mast off saving everybody on board from almost certain death. Although battered and bruised, William's transport ship arrived safely in Hobart. Prisoner 323, however, he still had to front the authorities and explain himself. Prisoner 323, Mr. William Walker, you are hereby found guilty of ship stealing and absconding from public works. You are to receive 150 lashes and to serve the remainder of your sentence at Macquarie Harbour. Macquarie Harbour. 
on the western coast of Van Diemen's Land. Probably the worst, harshest penal colony in all of Britannia. No convict wanted to go there. Oh, but William was lucky once again. The captain of the Deveron, the ship that William saved in Bass Strait, he got the ear of the judge and was able to tell him of his heroic deeds in saving the entire ship. Well, the judge found some sympathy and commuted William's sentence to Macquarie Harbour. William still got his 150 lashes, but at least he was able to resume his work on the docks in Hobart, on the Derwent. But you got to promise not to be naughty ever again, William. Look, mateys, the Deveron, she's all fixed. Is she really? Is she's she going really? back to England. You can't keep a good convict down. And for William, opportunity was knocking at his door again. It's working back on the docks again, William had seen in front of his very eyes the ship that he rescued in Bass Strait was getting fully repaired and seaworthy again. And I guess he was getting along with the crew because he found himself the opportunity to stow away. The ship was going to England and William was not going to miss that. Him and a few other convicts managed to be smuggled aboard and they were gone. I think the governor of Van Diemen's land really needs to spend some money on harbour security. And William was on his way, on his way to freedom back to London. But first, a quick stop over to Rio. Oh, and your name William Walker? It's not safe anymore. Better change it and get the next ship out of here. The man who was always known as William Brown around the Thames was back. And this time, he sent for his family. William was reunited with his family. Unfortunately, one of his children had died in his absence. But at least they were together again and William could look after them as best he could. William also managed to get a job again back on the Thames River. Whether the pay from working on the docks was good enough or not is unclear, but one thing is clear. William slid into the habit of stealing from ships again. In fact, he was doing it so much, it didn't take long for him to get caught. And remember that talent William had for escaping? Well, he did it again. He managed to escape from a cart that was transporting him to jail. He slid out, disappeared again, but only for a short time. Now, it must have been a lot that he stole because each time he was fined or put into the local jail for only short periods. But his reputation as William Brown the thief, well, it was getting the better of him. He decided to move house and change his name. And that name he chose, the new alias, was William Swallow. Remember that name. And just because you change your name, it does not mean that you change your game. William moved himself and his family to that little suburb known as Soho. He thought that he could live in obscurity, but as we know, he had some new habits. After moving to Soho, William got busted five times. Petty crimes again, didn't get punished all that harshly. But the six times a charm, William decided to rob a house. And he was caught. Robbing a house, it's a capital offence in England. But William somehow got away with it. He did not get the death penalty. He's the luckiest bloke alive, probably. Let's think about this for a second. William has been away from Australia as a fugitive for six years. And for the whole time William's been back in England, he has not once blurted out that his real name is William Walker. Not to a policeman, not in a court of law, not to a friend. His wife, who definitely knows, she also has not said anything. They're trying a man named William Swallow, not William Walker. William Swallow, you have been found guilty, and you shall suffer the punishment of transportation to Van Diemen's land. Hobart? Jesus, I'm trying to get away from that joint!
After arriving in Hobart again, William Swallow is given prisoner number 999. And lucky for William, not one person recognised him as he walked off the boat. Nearly everyone he had known there previously had moved on. Prisoner number 999, Mr William Swallow. Little birdie told me that you're not too bad sailing a ship. Well, perhaps I've got a bit of a job for you. Have you ever worked on the Obart docks before? Uh, no, I never worked on the Obart docks before. Aye, that's right, Mr Swallow. You haven't worked on the Hobart docks before. Well, not since the early 1820s. But don't tell them that. Shh. Right, there she is. She's going back. I think she's going to Sydney. Either way, I'm going to be on her. I'm getting out of here. Right, this one's due out very, very soon. Time to do a bit of an inspection, yeah? You just wait here, I'll go have a look. Hello, 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 what have we here? Some stowaways. Right, you lot come with me. Hey, I know you, you're prisoner number 999. Best come with me, lad. Best come with me. Mr. William Swallow, you've been found guilty of absconding. Whatever are we to do with you? Remember I said that the Van Diemen's Land governor had to do something about wharf security? Well, in the six years that William was away, convicts stealing ships and stowing away had become so prevalent that the governor had to step in. A new regulation was created. Ships about to leave port had to be inspected for stowaway convicts. By this time, the Van Diemen's Land authorities had worked out that this William Swallow character was actually convict number 323 of old, Mr. William Walker, an escapee who has somehow found his way back to Van Diemen's Land. How he has avoided the noose is anyone's guess, but here he is. But this time William gets lucky again. He avoids the noose, and the authorities decide that the best thing to do for him is to send him to Macquarie Harbour on the west coast of Van Diemen's Land, that place of tyranny. And this cycle, it could have defined William as a man until he died. But William Walker, well, he is no ordinary convict. Certainly, he is no ordinary man. William had a free spirit that no prison cell could break or hold. It's certainly a lot already to cram into one lifetime what William has already done. But William's hour had not yet come. It was just about to. In Hobart Jail, William awaited the next part of his sentence to begin. The Van Diemen's Land authorities were good for their word, and William's fate was going to be sealed at Macquarie Harbour. To get William there, the government had procured a vessel for this possible last journey under sentence. It was a little brig waiting at the harbour docks. A little brig called the Cypress.